Hi guys, this is Duncan from Dunksub.com. I thought I'd use this video to talk to you a bit about the Bash shell, or the shell, or the Linux terminal, or the terminal, whatever you want to call it, I thought I'd give a bit of an introduction and talk about file manipulation. So you may have seen my previous videos on the Windows command prompt. If you haven't, go ahead and click the links now to go and see those videos. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, comparison with the Linux terminal, because the Linux terminal can pretty much control every aspect of your system, whereas the Windows command prompt pretty much can only do file manipulation and only the tools that they give you which isn't really that many compared to the terminal so let's go ahead and dive into the terminal now as you can see I'm just going to type in Firefox and it launches Firefox you can use it for program launching what we can also do is arguments against the program so I can say Firefox and then dash and then V and it will show me the version of Firefox if I do Firefox and then dash dash V it does exactly the same. Now, one thing to be aware that some commands you may issue may require a double dash, some do a single dash, but you should be able to get help on these commands, which I'll show you how to in just a few seconds. Now, I'm not gonna stay inside this terminal. I'm actually gonna change to a virtual console. Press Alt, Control, and then F1. As you can see, it totally changes, it goes out of the user interface, and it now goes into a CLI, or a command line interface. Now, I can actually do Alt, Control, and then F2. And you'll see it looks a little bit different. I'm already logged in to the first virtual console, so you can see it's all logged in. Normally, you'd probably see this, Ubuntu 9.1, Osiris UV, TTY2. Now, TTY stands for Teletypewriter. Don't worry about it at this point. All you need to know is that number. So you're in console two now, console three, four, five, six. And if you went to Alt Control and then F7, you're back into the graphical user interface. So let's go back into the, uh, the first one that I'm logged into. Now you can see it says Duncan at Osiris UV tilde and then a dollar. What the hell does that mean? Well, if we go straight into the Windows, you can see it says C uses Duncan. Now, this is the folder that I'm currently in, or the location I'm in, and that's pretty much all that says. In terms of the terminal, or the bash, you can see Duncan, which is my username that I'm currently logged in as, at Osiris UV, which is the computer name, or terminal name, whatever you want to call it. Now, Osiris UV is my naming system for my computers. I usually say Osiris dash, and then whatever it's running, so Ubuntu, or XP, or Vista, or Linux, um, yeah, a bit, uh, 7 even, so that'll be Osiris 7, and then a D, an L, or a V desktop, laptop, or virtual. That's what I do, that's how I name my systems, but don't worry about that. Now the tilde is basically the home directory, so you can see I have C uses Duncan, and these are done with backslashes. You'll see that the file system is totally different, you actually use forward slashes, and the tilde is the equivalent of being in a home slash Duncan. Now, the dollar sign basically means that you are a user. You're doing your commands as a user. If that was a hash or a gate, which you may see sometimes, that would be you're running the command as root or an administrator. Now, Ubuntu, which is the distro I'm using here, kind of locks you out of that a little bit. You can kind of go into it, but it's not encouraged, and they'd rather you use something called sudo or sudo. It basically stands for super user do. So you're running it as an administrator, you then issue your command, and then it'll go ahead and run it as an administrator. So that pretty much covers what this actually looks like, and let's go ahead and start with some file manipulation. If you need to know any more about anything, feel free to let me know. If I've missed anything, leave something in the comments. Um, I may make a future video on this. So I'm going to go ahead and list the, directory, um, sorry, list the contents of a directory. Now, what you can actually do is very similar to Windows and just do DIR and it will show you that. But they've actually got a GNU core utility, a GNU core utility, don't worry about that, that's another thing for a future video, called ls. So press ls, all the blue, all the purple ones are directories, and all the white ones are the files. So what I'm actually gonna do is uh, change the directory to the desktop. I wanna see what's on my desktop right now. So I'm gonna go cd, and then desktop. But you'll see that it says no such file or directory, but hang on, there is, you can see it there, it's, it's in there. Now, bash is case sensitive, so I actually need to do CD and then a capital D desktop. And there we go, We're now inside there. I can then do an LS again or a DIR, depending on what you do. And you'll see there's something called demo. But I actually made that in gedit, which is a text editor, and I forgot to put the dot text on the end, dot txt on the end of that file. So I actually need to rename it. Now, bash does have a rename command, but that's more for multiple files. What you actually have to do is move it to a new file. So I'm actually gonna do, do move, which is mv, and then demo, demo.txt. You can see nothing really happens, ls, because it now is demo.txt. What I can actually do is copy it as well. So if I say cp, which is shorthand for copy, and then say demo.txt, uh, demo2.txt, excuse my typing, 
then ls that. I now have demo2.txt and demo.txt. So if I want to remove demo2.txt because I don't really need it, rm demo2.txt, there we go. It's as simple as that. So I want to create a directory now inside the desktop randomly. So I'm going to say mkdir. So let's make a directory or a folder and I'm just going to say test. I'm going to ls this and you can now see that the purple directory is now test. Now if I want to remove this, I actually have to do rm dash rf and then test. Now the r, the first r is recursive, so that just means it's going to go through all the subdirectories and delete everything. And f is forced. So if I say r rm rf test and ls that, it's now gone. So that's how you remove a directory. It's a little bit, I'm surprised they don't have rmdir. In fact, let's just check if they do. Oh, we can do that. So we'll do that then. So we're going to do mkdir. But using, um, sorry, I'm just learning this now. Um, mkdir test, rmdir test. Ah, there we go. So that does that anyway. But if you want to do the rm-rf, that is to delete everything in the subdirectory. So you're going to delete all the files and delete all the subfolders inside that. But rmdir apparently in Ubuntu works as well. So I apologize for that. Use that rmdir if you need something easier. So how about getting some help? Um, if you want to just randomly find out how many commands there are under the Z letter. Now, the great thing about uh, this is that you can actually auto-complete things. So if I say lsdemo.txt, you can see I didn't just type all that. I just went lsde, press the tab key, and it auto-completes for me. So what you can actually do is do for commands L and then tab and then tab again, and it's going to show me a bunch of commands. You see all these different commands. Whoops. And yeah, you can go through all of them. So if I say Z, two tabs, it's going to show me all the commands. Now, what if I, for example, want to know what zip cloak was? I don't know what the hell that means. So I'm going to go man and then zip cloak. This will actually show me the uh, Linux programmer's manual, which, as you can see, very easy to read. It tells me the name, zip cloak, tells me what it does, tells me all the commands or arguments I can use against it, another description. Press Q and I can come out of it. You can also do, uh, for example, zip cloak dash dash help, and this will show you a shorthand version of it. You can also do info and then zip cloak. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can just go through all of these and then find out. Now, if I want to clear the screen, instead of doing CLS, which you usually do inside Windows, you say clear. It's as simple as that. So that kind of covers it really. That's uh, some basic file manipulation and an introduction to the terminal. As you can see, there's plenty of help. If you want to have a look at a website which covers a lot of the commands, go ahead and go to linuxmanpages.com. You can go to the general commands. And you can see there's a hell of a lot here. There's a lot of core utilities that um, uh, GNU, um, all the GNU core utilities, there's a lot of ones that they've created and all the standard commands you can do inside Linux. Now, they may vary across distributions, but they shouldn't really. Bash is usually the same across all of them. So that pretty much covers it. I apologize if you didn't really understand that. Just rewind, have a listen again. If I haven't done anything right, please let me know in the comments. If you want to know anything more in depth, please let me know as well. That's about it already. Thanks for watching this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you like my videos. And thanks again.